Hey everybody, welcome back to Wild Care. It's Wednesday and today we are hanging out with one of my favorite wildlife ambassadors, Stryker, the California King Snake. We're here of course with Melissa, who is Wild Care's ambassador program manager. Hello. And Melissa, tell us about Stryker. And if I could have, if you guys could let me know if you can't hear us, uh, we have the microphone set up, but if you can't hear Melissa, try to give me a message and we'll try to figure out what's happening. So Melissa, take right. it away. All right, so Stryker, um, California King Snake, came to Wild Care in um, 2017 and he was surrendered. Um, California King Snakes and along with Rosie Boas are snakes that you can uh, purchase in the pet trade. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Like a, just a normal pet store in California? You, yeah, you can um, you can purchase them online too. Oh, that's horrifying. Yeah, it is, it is. Oh. Um, so the laws or the restrictions for reptiles are a lot different than they are for the raptors or um, any of our mammals. So they're a lot um, less strict. And the California king snake, um, Look at his tongue. I know, so isn't cool. that cool? Yeah. Right? Um, so he's surrendered to us. So he's four years old. And the reason why he can't go back into the wild is because he was raised as a pet. But what can happen with reptiles is that they can uh, spend so much time with humans that they can take back diseases into the wild population. Oh, interesting. Sure. Plus, we wouldn't want to release him just anywhere. You know, I mean, that would disturb the balance within that ecosystem. So we actually, you know, since he was bought in the pet trade, was raised um, by humans, it would disturb the ecosystem if we put him back out sure, there. Sure, because he's, he's a healthy dude, right? He's a very healthy dude. So, I'm sorry, how old was he when we got him? Do you remember? Uh, he, we believe a year old. Okay. And um, so he's grown a lot in a year. He I think has he was a lot smaller when he first showed up at Wild Care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've uh, worked with one other California king snakes, and I've worked for some corn snakes or with some corn snakes. And when they are um, hatch out of eggs, because these guys actually hatch out of eggs, yeah, um, they're about the size of a number two pencil. Oh, okay, right, a little so, tiny guy, a little tiny guy. So they grow really, really uh, rapidly here. He's probably a good three to four feet, I would say. Yeah, That's, he's just extraordinary. Look at that pretty face. Yes, he's very handsome and the reason why he's wrapped around me and um, hanging on to me is because I am warm. Oh, Because I'm warm blooded, are. yep. And yes. reptiles are cold blooded <laughs> and which means that they have to generate their um, heat by going out in the sun. Right. Right. Or in this case, because I'm a warm blooded mammal, he's just hanging out on me because I'm warm. Excellent. So he's warming up here. Now these guys are uh, they are crepuscular, meaning that they uh, hunt at dawn and dusk, but they can also um, go nocturnal as well, okay. uh, depending on um, the type of uh, weather that's, uh, you know, that we're having throughout the seasons. Is he using his eyesight to navigate, or is he mostly using that tongue with the, they the have sense very, of smell and taste? Yes, they're using the tongue because they have actually very poor eyesight. Okay. Uh, so he's using the tongue to smell and taste, and it's a forked tongue. And the reason why it's forked is because that gives it more area to gather information. Uh -huh. So like a owl triangulates with its ears, yep. that's what the forked tongue does for the California, for the I snakes. I didn't yeah. know that. Yep. Oh, yep. that's so interesting. So you can gather two different bits of sensory data from two different points with mm -hmm. the forked tongue. Mm -hmm. And that gives you more information than just a single taste yeah. spot or yeah. a scent spot. Yeah. Isn't that cool? He's so funny. He was so active just a couple of minutes ago, and now he's, I wonder if it's because we're talking. Is he kind of weirded out, do you think? Um, they don't have uh, true ears, but they can sense vibrations. So okay. definitely, um, probably just sensing vibrations. He's doing great. He um, is. Just hanging out with us here. Uh, there are a lot of different types or subspecies of California king snakes. Um, this is one of the more common ones that you'll see. You'll notice that he has, of course, these um, beautiful yellow stripes rather than being a solid color. And what those stripes um, help them do is actually break up um, the color so it helps with camouflage because he's both predator and prey. Hang on one second. Oh. I'm hoping everybody can see. Hey, Matt, how you doing? It says, bring them on camera. I'm worried that that means that you can't, people can't see my screen. Oh. Well, I can see my screen. Not sure what's happening here. Huh. Oh, that's actually just a thing from, okay, that's just a Facebook thing. Okay, okay. sorry. <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, okay. Carry on. So what uh, king snakes eat, they are uh, carnivores, so of course rodents, um, amphibians, lizards, uh, and where he gets the name, snakes. They eat other snakes. Oh, right. Now, can these guys actually eat rattlesnakes? They can. They are highly resistant to the venom. Um, so they are constrictors. 
They're not like rattlesnakes, of course, they don't have the venom, um, and they just constrict around them and they can consume them. Now, the question is, can he bite? Yes, he can. He can, but what happens when he bites? Um, he, well, it's a strike, and he, uh, when he bites, he leaves a little bit of marks. Okay. I've, I've actually been, not been by, bit by a striker, but I have been bit by a snake. And the way that I describe it as being bit by one of these guys is like if you walk across the carpet uh -huh. and then you go touch a metal door handle and it's like a big shock. Oh, okay. That's what it feels like. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Okay, it, sure. Yeah. Yeah, because he doesn't have the fangs mm -mm. that a venomous snake would have. No, so, uh, no, a snake no. that would be... Uh, a danger to you would be a snake, like a rattlesnake that right. does actually have that venom that he can bite you and cause, obviously, significant injury. But mm -hmm. these guys are constrictors, so how do they do that? So, um, of course, they sneak up on the prey, they strike the prey with their head, and then they wrap around it real quick. Okay. Wrap so, it around super tight, make sure that it's all squished. Squished. Can't breathe at all. Squished. And every time that the, um, if let's just say it's a rodent, if it's a rodent, every time that the rodent breathes, it, they're constricting more and they're constricting more until the animal is dead. And then what they do is they actually release the, the animal and then they have to smell around that animal and figure out which is the head and which is the tail. Okay. Because they have to eat uh, head first or else they're going to choke. Oh, of course. Got to go direct in the direction of the fur. Go in the direction of the fur. And once they do that, they can open up their jaws really wide, but at the bottom of the jaw, it's unhinged. Ooh. So they can open it really wide, and they can consume prey that's probably about his size plus half. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, he's kind of a narrow snake mm -hmm. if you look at his body here. I mean, that wouldn't be a very large rodent, so he can eat something his size, about his size, plus another half? Plus another half. That's pretty impressive. Now, the next question is, how do they eat that mouse and still breathe? Right? Oh. Well, they actually have a, a, a goitus, which is an extension of their trachea, and they, it's like a, like a snorkel, right? Ah! So they push that to the side and so that they can breathe while they're consuming their prey. That would be a challenge that I had not thought about. Yeah, if you're yes. swallowing something that is bigger than your head, how yeah. do you breathe while how do you, you swallow breathe? it? And their um, teeth are faced backwards. Uh -huh. And so what they do is they, they walk the prey back through their um, mouth okay. or their jaw. Um, and that's how they do it. And then they start you know, moving and start slowly pushing it down. Of course, he's all muscle, really. They're very, very strong. Um, How often does he have to eat? He eats once a week. Okay. Um, of course, when it gets colder, they don't have to eat once a week. They can go a couple weeks without eating. Okay. Um, and if it were a female, um, maybe eat more for uh, breeding season. What I think is really interesting about um, king snakes here, this California king snake, is that the mom lays the eggs and then leaves. Okay. Doesn't stay around, doesn't... There are some snake species that will actually take care of their eggs you know, and then wait for them to hatch and all that. But these guys actually just lay the eggs and go. Interesting. So some snake parents do actually care for mm -hmm. their young. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. King snakes are not among them. King That's snakes okay. are not they're among on their them. Own. So they're on their own. And, you know, once they hatch from that egg, they got to hurry out of there real quick because if they have brothers and sisters who are themselves, they can also become food. <laughs> <laughs> Family dynamics, always a challenge. Survival of the fittest, you know. That's it. I thought an interesting um, characteristic that you can tell if it's a venomous, most venomous snakes, I should say, or non-venomous snakes, is that their pupils are round. Yeah. If it's non-venomous. Yeah. Right? And then if it's venomous, of course, it has that slit there. The other thing that I, the other way to tell the difference between the venomous and the non-venomous that I always think of is the shape of the head. Ah. So if, like our friend Stryker here, the head is the shape of your thumb, he is not venomous. But if the head is flat and in the shape of a diamond, then it is a venomous species. Mm -hmm. Or it is a species that wants you to think that he's a venomous species. We saw that, if you scroll back through our videos, we had the gopher snake release. Oh, okay. And you can actually see one of the gopher snakes that Brittany is releasing. You can see him change the shape of his head. Oh. Flatten it out and make it look like a rattlesnake. And if you rattle your little tail in some oh, leaves yeah. and you 
the, you know, sp spiral yourself up just the right amount and you flatten your head, mm -hmm. you're going to look like a rattlesnake and that means you don't look like dinner. I find it fascinating. Kind of like the octopus on land. You know how the octopus, they can mimic as well? Yeah. You know, and change different shapes, yeah. different colors to mimic. Yeah, that's isn't that it. cool? Very, very cool. And that's another thing too. People think that just because it's a rattlesnake, it can rattle its tail. They they can rattle their tail. They just don't have the extra scales on the end to right. do that. Right. Do king snakes do that also yeah, to, to yeah. kind of give the impression that they're a rattlesnake and try yeah. to scare off a pred potential predator? Yeah. yeah, because and also when he's in shed, which is why one of the reasons that um, you guys are meeting him for the first time today on Facebook Live is because every time that we've tried to go do a Facebook, he's either has just eaten or he's in shedding. And when they yeah. shed, they have a... Um, opaque scale that is over their eye and it's um, it, it's really blinding you know what I mean it so it makes him definitely more um, cautious and when he's in shed and he'll start rattling his tail like that because he just can't his senses are all messed up right so that would be stressful for him yeah well this has been such a treat thank you so much You're Stryker welcome. for coming out and thank you Melissa for bringing Stryker out Everybody stay well. Uh, check us out n uh, Friday. We're going to be back with another live stream. No mm -hmm. idea what we're doing, but it's going to be cool. Be um, take care, everybody. Stay healthy. Stay well. And we will see you on Friday. Visit us online at discoverwildcare.org. Thank you. Bye.